and more. Tickets are on sale now at wildwinewalk.org. So hurry and snag your tickets before they're gone. This event promises to be a wildly good time. Come enjoy some full-bodied fun, (laughs) zoo style. Guests must be 21 and older for entry. Insurance companies have teams of professionals to fight your claim. If you want to know what your case is really worth, I'm Spencer Callahan. I'd like to help. Spencer Callahan is the one to see. Call 387 LA filing number 16-7970. WNXX, Jackson, KNXX, Donaldsonville, and WDGLHD2 Baton Rouge. This hour brought to you by Spencer Callahan Injury Lawyers. LA 21-12681. Offices in Baton Rouge. Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Welcome in! Hunt Palmer coming to you from Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this Tuesday. It means we're brought to you by Pluckers Wing Bar. Got Jacob Beck and Jordan Kitchens back there on the ones and twos. And fired up to be with you here as we get your work week off to a good start. Glenn West, our normal Tuesday guest coming up at 1.30. We'll have Sharif Ishak at 2 o'clock talking Pels and Lakers with Sharif. Also a little bit of Saints news as well. J.D. Piquel from on three sports with us every Wednesday during football season. He's going to jump aboard at 2.15 because it's transfer portal season. <laughs> and we want to talk about that with J.D. He's also been uh, been locked into the spring games over the last couple of weeks. So we'll talk some college football with J.D. Piquel. Um, I am frantically refreshing Twitter every 20 seconds because at some point some significant transfer portal news is going to break. Uh, in regards to LSU. I don't have any specific information as to who that's going to be, but you just have to look at the numbers. LSU is over the roster limit currently, and they've got to add defensive tackles. So somewhere in the neighborhood of four to eight players are going to transfer out of LSU within the next couple weeks. This is the first time you can publicly announce that and file your paperwork. I'm assuming that stuff's going to start happening here pretty quickly. So as that does happen... We'll, uh, we'll update you, but we're going to start with with baseball. Jay Johnson had his coaching cert, uh, coaching search, had his uh, coach's show last night from TJ Ribs with Chris Blair. And you know, I was curious to see Jay's tenor here because we understand that this is not a situation that he has been in at LSU, and he's quite honestly never been in it anywhere in his coaching career. Um, his first year, we understand, was a a transition year, to put it mildly. I wouldn't call it a rebuild. I would call it a transition. You had Dylan Cruz. You had Trey Morgan. You had Jordan Thompson. You had Gavin Dugas. Guys that had been important players on a super regional team the year before. You had Mikhail Hilliard, who you could trust. Devin Fontenot was back. I mean, there were a lot of guys who had played some good baseball at LSU who were back. And, of course, Jay went out and he brought in Jacob Berry and he brought in Paul Gervais and he brought in Eric Razelman and like they kind of cobbled it together and it wasn't always perfect but they played well enough to to reach a regional and got into the regional final there and everybody was kind of on the same page there and then last season the expectations were through the roof and outside of a like ten day blip with the bullpen um, it was pretty optimistic around here. And at this point, you have kind of scraped at the bottom of the barrel. You're two and thirteen. We all are three and twelve. We all understand that. And so I was curious to what he would sound like last night. And um, it, positive energy is something that I'm concerned with with this team because, like Jay's never been in this situation. None of these guys expected to be in this situation. It just gets freaking old losing every single weekend getting run ruled three times on Sundays and like having leads get away in the sixth inning and not being able to get the big hit in the seventh inning. And I, that can weigh on young people sometimes. And I'm just curious, you know, kind of what Jay's thoughts were on positive energy. And he spoke to that last night on his coach's show. But really we talked about this last week about, you know, really moving forward to 
what's next. And, you know, as difficult as the stretch is, as difficult as I've had in my entire coaching career, you know, we can still make the choice to have positive energy about what we're trying to accomplish and improve the baseball along the way as we go. And to me, that's the only that's the only solution right now and really the only option right now. It's not the only option. You can have a bunch of negative energy and get worse. Like, that is an option. I hope it's not the option. I hope it's the exact opposite of that. I hope it's a lot of positive energy and a lot of guys that play better and play and have some fun and, and start winning some games and turn things around and make things interesting late. But it's not the only option. There is an option to mope and to start looking at the transfer portal or decide you're going to go professional or you know whatever the case may be. Like That stuff is an option for young people in college athletics right now. What we've heard Jay talk about a lot in his time at LSU is the benefit that it has been to be able to lean on Palmineri and especially Skip Bertman in his time here. And Skip had a lot of sayings. Hold the rope, the inevitable two. There were lots of sayings that, that Skip had, but one of them was, was, was called the pressure barrier. And obviously Jay has been talking to Skip and that's something that the two of them have communicated about is getting this team through that in a game-in, game-out basis. And Jay spoke to, to exactly what that means last night. I think when we went to Arkansas, number one team in the country, I mean, we were ahead in every game, you know, in the in the fifth inning. And there's, you know, two elements of, you know, getting past what, you know, Coach Burtman would talk about is the pressure barrier where you just you eventually somebody's got to hit a ball in the gap with guys on base, you know, to create a big inning. And at some point when you get that lead, you need somebody to go out and throw a zero. And we haven't put those two things uh, together, and it's led to a couple tough losses. That's just the case. Um, they have had leads against Arkansas, as he mentioned. They've had a bunch of guys on base at different times against Tennessee. Even in the low-scoring game on Saturday, it was 3-1. to one. You had innings with multiple guys on base. You just need somebody to hit in the parking lot. Like, just one time. They've gotten some big hits early. Tommy White, leadoff home run at Arkansas. Ashton Larson, three-run home run at Arkansas. That, that, that's great stuff. And against Tennessee, you took a lead in, in one of those games early. But somebody's got to do it in the eighth inning. And then the next guy's got to come out there and strike some guys out. Like, it's not as if this team cannot pitch at all. It's not as if this team cannot hit at all. They just haven't done it in the opportune time. It's been very, very frustrating. And he's tried a lot of different things. Lineup changes have happened. He has put a lot of different guys out there. I talked about this for 15 minutes yesterday about all the different types of lineups he's put out there. And Jay spoke to kind of what they're looking to do with the lineup changes. You know, it's a fine line, you know, in, in terms of trying to set the lineup, you know, you're thinking offense or defense, and we don't have a clear answer where the same guy is the answer at, at that spot. And so feeling like we would need to score a little bit, we tried a, a little bit different uh, setup with the lineup. Uh, it hurt us. You know, we had two throwing errors that led to two of their runs, which was tough because, you know, it's 6-3 game in the ninth inning, and we have the tying run at, at the plate. And so – Offensively, um, you know, it was good at the end to put ourselves in position to win, but against a team that can hurt you offensively, you cannot give them any extra outs, which I thought we did a good job of that the next two days, yeah. but that hurt us in the game on Friday. It's always something. Throwing errors, pitching staff walking people, striking out with the bases loaded, like not getting the bunt down. I mean, there's there's always something, and this team just hasn't been able to put it together. A couple of guys who have been – bright spots at this point. If I were to ask you, the listener, or the LSU baseball fan, like, name me a couple of bright spots from this team. I think probably, even before you got to Luke Coleman, I, probably Griffin Herring would be pretty quick. But Ashton Larson and Stephen Milam would probably be two of the, the first answers that you gave. And those are two guys that I did not think would be huge impact guys on this team. I thought it was possible that Stephen Milam could wrestle a spot away early because he really swung the bat well in January leading up to opening day. Ashton Larson was not on my radar for this team. I mean, if you go back to shows we did last June, Ashton Larson was very much on my radar because he was a guy out of Overland Park, Kansas, that you thought might take the draft money and not come to LSU. Well, he did, and so did Milam. That's a guy we had on this show. 
And uh, those two guys have, have been good, and Jay talked about them. I don't think uh, SEC baseball is a really forgiving place for young players. And as I just mentioned with Ashton, that's been the real positive is his ability to uh, slow the game down. If you look at his statistics, a lot of it has come in SEC play. I've always been attracted to guys that hit first and then develop power later. I definitely think he fits into that category. And like I said, I think his mental game is strong with Steven. You know, he's going to play hard. I think the defense has been, you know, great. He turns a double play extremely well. I was really happy to see him get a couple right-handed hits. Uh, he and I have had more conversations here in the last week and a half, 10 days within the game about, like, this is what you need to do to positively impact our team. And it's different for him as opposed to somebody like Tommy White. Yeah, you're, you're not asking Stephen Milam to, to hit, hit the ball 400 feet. <laughs> you're not asking him to drive the ball out of the ballpark the other way. Turn double plays, make the routine play at second base, hit me a couple of singles, maybe steal me a base. If you need to move the baseball with the runner on second and nobody out and hit the ball to the right side so that we get a guy in scoring position, that's what we need you to do. Like it's a different different ask of a guy that's got a different skill set and is certainly at a different point in his collegiate career. And that's certainly where where Steven Milam is. But Larson's kind of been the biggest shining star in the last three weeks, really since they plugged him into the lineup in Fayetteville, and Jay elaborated on on the young freshman left-hander. Proud of Ashton. I think the mental stability, uh, the maturity that he's playing with as a freshman, honestly is, you know, some of the best on our team. Like some guys that have played a little more college baseball, if they emulated kind of how he's going about it, would put themselves in a better spot. And he's going to stand there, and he's going to play. And uh, I'm very committed to that based on uh, the types of at-bats that he's taken. I, I'm glad to hear you mention his play in the outfield because that was a little bit of a question mark when he was coming to us, and he's been exceptional you know, defensively in the outfield as well. So uh, really happy to have Ashton here, and uh, he'll definitely be a centerpiece of the rest of the year and what we're trying to do going forward. That quote right there I can put into two categories. One was just really praising a young player and what he's done on the field. And there was a little bite in the middle of that, if you caught it, saying that there are some older guys who approach things maybe the way he does, they might be doing things a little bit better. And that is not something I heard Jay do a lot of last year. And I'm going to go ahead and take some liberties here with some things that I don't know. That's part of the gig here to talk radio. And I want to be very, very clear that I don't know any of this. This is purely speculation on my part, 100%. It just sounds like something's not right with this group. It's just what it is. It's a shutout with 14 strikeouts. It's pretty easy to get along with each other after that happens. I get it. It's pretty easy when Dylan Cruz hits 420 with 18 homers. It's pretty easy when Cruz and White, I mean, Cruz and Morgan and Thompson and Dugas and Beloso and Travinsky and Malazzo and all those guys have been together for three years. Like, that stuff just lines up, and it, it makes things easier. It's hard to be together every single day when it's going on like this. And maybe they are, and they're just He's talking about a young player and say if some of the other guys maybe approach things like that, it could be a little different result. And I'm going, okay, that's not super encouraging. So we'll see. Winning has a way of curing things, or at least masking them. Maybe they start winning tonight and into the weekend, and things change. But it just doesn't feel super awesome. I think we're all on the same page with that one. Our baseball breakdowns all season long brought to you by Pluckers. So are our Tuesday shows. I'll be at Pluckers tonight. Sports trivia at 8.30. We'll have Pell's basketball. Have LSU UNO. Should be a big old time tonight at Pluckers. So we'll take a time out when we come back. It's transfer portal season. Who are some guys I'd like to see LSU add at defensive tackle? We know the position they're looking at. Who could some of the players be? That's next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. OneBathandClosets.com is the website. David Vaughn and his team, 30 years redesigning, remodeling bathrooms and closets. Check out this five-star review from last month, March of 2024. We had our entire master bedroom remodeled with removing tub and existing small shower and putting in very large shower in a linen closet where a small shower was. 
This work this company did was outstanding from beginning to end. I recommend one bath and closets to everyone. Also had the floor replaced with some beautiful wood like tile. David and his crew are wonderful. It's a five star review from just last month. That's a whole bathroom, bedroom style remodel they can handle for you. That's a pretty extensive product and they can help you with it. If it's something simple like a tub to shower conversion, they can help you with that too. Check out the website, One Bath and Closets. You'll see some more reviews like that five star review have the phone number right there, 225-460-2359. You'll see pictures of their great work, and you can request that free consultation. It's One Bath and Closets. Check them out online at onebathandclosets.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh, shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Bayou Ford has $10,000 off F-150s, $10,000 off the new F-150 truck, plus 1.9% for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing, and Charles Hanegraaff, join us for the Wednesday edition of Live at Lunch from Snow Seafood and Steak on Airline Highway in Gonzales. Rabelais back from the Masters and Wes Reynolds joins us from Beeson. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Wednesday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. One hundred four five ESPN Baton Rouge and the Baton Rouge Clinic bring you the Dreams Come True Radiothon. Dreams Come True is an organization designed to help grant dreams for children with life-threatening illnesses and their families. The Dreams Come True Radiothon is presented today by Boudreaux Electric, Mid City Title, and Unique Physique. Donate today at one hundred four five ESPN dot com. You are listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Plucker's Wing Bar. So, the transfer portal opened today. Um, I don't know that I necessarily expect LSU to land a transfer today. It's certainly possible. I think the more likely scenario when 
talking about LSU today is that someone announces they are entering the transfer portal. Um, but until that happens, I'm going to leave that alone uh, and we'll just react to, to that type of news. I think we all know, because Brian Kelly literally said this in his last press conference before the spring game, he said, defensive tackle is where we will add, and really, we're not looking anywhere else. So, the question is, where are the defensive tackles? I have said this multiple times over the last two weeks. Like, I feel like finding a cornerback or a running back is pretty doable. Six foot one, 195 pound dudes that can run a little bit are pretty prevalent across all levels of football. Now, whether or not they're first-team All-SEC players or not, well, we, we'll leave that determination. But they're findable. Six-foot-four, 310-pound guys that can move are tougher to find. Like, they just, there aren't as many of them on earth. So it's the toughest thing to identify. And you're going to have to find guys that are unhappy with their current situation or looking for something different to bring in. The name that I'm very comfortable bringing up because he's literally been on a visit to LSU within the last two weeks is Philip Bleedy. Philip Bleedy was a three-star recruit. He signed with and played for Texas Tech. He played in 10 games in the COVID year as a freshman, um, played in 13 games, made 16 tackles as a sophomore in 2021. In 2022, Played in 12 games, made 18 tackles, had four and a half TFLs, two sacks, and then played really the most as a senior. Uh, played in all 12 games, started 11 of them um, for uh, for Indiana after transferring. Um, so that's kind of where his first four years concluded, and he's looking to play somewhere else. So you're looking at a guy who played a good bit at Texas Tech, started at Indiana. He's six foot three, 300 pounds, and has been on a visit to LSU. This is clearly a player they would like to bring in. Um, he's got some other options. You're going to see him visit Oklahoma coming up here soon, and he'll make a decision. It sounds like likely between LSU and Oklahoma in the coming days, week, whatever the case may be. He's got a little bit of time, but that's that's one that, that you can identify as a target a player that's played Power 5 football at two different stops, that makes a lot of sense to bring in. Again, I don't know that you're bringing in Glenn Dorsey here, um, but he is a, a functional defensive tackle that you can bring in to give you some snaps. There are two guys that the internet has enjoyed having some rumors about. I don't work for a newspaper in 1993, so I don't have to triple source this and make sure my facts are correct. I can just discuss rumors as they happen online. Some I choose to indulge in. Some I choose to just leave where they are. I'll choose to indulge in a couple of these. Bear Alexander was a five-star. Excuse me. Got to clear the throat. We got issues today, but we're going to power through it for another hour and a half. Um, Bear Alexander was a former five-star recruit. Spent last season at USC. Played some solid football on the interior. This is a guy who is a potential high-round draft pick when his time comes, who is a huge talent. This could be an all-conference type player if he decides to leave USC. I'm interested in him for two reasons. One, could he leave USC, who, oh, by the way, LSU plays in a couple of months. And two, can he come play for LSU? He's not in the portal yet. That's just rumors that are being tossed about. But I would love it if that was an option for LSU. I have no idea if he is for sure entering the transfer portal, or if he's coming to Baton Rouge for a visit, or if he's considering to come to LSU to play football. I don't know. But he's that caliber of player. You're betting on the come a little bit with a player like Philip Bleedy, who, nice player at Indiana. Does that mean you're ready to play at LSU? It doesn't. We'll see. Jordan Jefferson was a nice player at West Virginia. He was ready to play at LSU. We've seen some transfers come in from other places that weren't really ready to play at LSU. So, Bear Alexander kind of fits that mold. And the other one who's not in the transfer portal at this point, but you're talking about a guy who has really made a name for himself at a level one tick down, is Patrick Jenkins. Patrick Jenkins is a John Eric product. He was a four-star recruit, a top 150 player in the country coming out of John Eric, 
and he signed at TCU. And he played in 18 games at TCU, uh, made a couple of starts there as a sophomore, and decided to move on to Tulane back in his hometown last year. He started all 14 games for the Green Wave, was second team all-conference. Um, he had nine tackles for loss, three sacks. He's got some pass rush ability for in the interior of the defensive line. Um, he had a big play in the game against USC in the Cotton Bowl where he broke through and forced a safety in 2022. Um, he is a a very, very talented player at six foot two, 305 pounds. I think he can play at LSU. The question is, does he want to continue his time at Tulane? Or does he want to see if there's a spot right down the road that might offer a little higher level of football? And I can hear all 11 Tulane fans saying, wait a second, we've been better than y'all the last two years. And I go, okay, uh, Tulane. Um, it's the American, it's the SEC. So I would suggest that this would be a step up in competition and potentially a chance for him to, to enrich his draft status. He may be perfectly happy at Tulane. I don't know. I got no inside information on that. But these are three guys who, for different reasons, would make a lot of sense at LSU. Bleedy is a guy who may want to take the step up from Texas Tech to Indiana to LSU. Jenkins, maybe he wanted to come home from Fort Worth to New Orleans. This is not that far away from home. Barry Alexander, maybe you just want to play at the highest level. And guess what? There's playing time right there. There are a lot of names in the transfer portal for defensive tackle. I looked at it this morning at on the 24-7 tracker that's got all the transfers. There's a couple dozen defensive tackles in the transfer portal. I'm not going to scout 30 guys who play defensive tackle. One, I'm not qualified to do it. Two, that's a lot of time wasted. I will react when something comes up with LSU, but these are the types of guys who make a lot of sense. We'll see if they decide to make LSU an option, a possibility. Bleedy has done that. Maybe it's his his final decision. We'll see as the transfer portal uh, window opens up and churns about rapidly over the next couple of weeks. No significant news on the LSU front yet. As I mentioned at the top of the show 30 minutes ago, like I continue to, to keep refreshing to see if, if a name pops up that we need to react to. But those are just a couple of guys that I think might make a little bit of sense for LSU. All right, let's move on and talk a little bit of LSU baseball with some spring game talk. Glenn West of Go 24-7 is always with us on our Tuesday shows. He's with us coming up next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. ESPN Bet is ready to take you through all the huge sports moments this spring. The exclusive sports book of ESPN has it all, including offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. From the playoff intensity, you know that's cranking up, to getting out on the links and out to the ballpark, there's no better time to be a sports fan. So sign up today, and new users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sports book bet. Download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. In partnership with LeBears Lake Charles. Terms and conditions apply. See app for details. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $11,000 off the new 23 Dodge Charger. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $11,000 off the powerful new Charger. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. 
But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Bayou Ford has $10,000 off F-150s, $10,000 off the new F-150 truck, plus 1.9% for 72 months. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a one million. Adam Ascona inviting you to join us for Tuesday's AFR, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. LSU baseball back at home against UNO, and we continue our SEC spring recaps looking at Tennessee. Join us, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Plucker's Wing Bar. Moving right along on this Tuesday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show, Sharif Ishak coming up in 30 minutes. We'll talk Pels and Saints with Sharif. J.D. Piquel of On3 Sports is with us, coming up at 2.15 to talk about the transfer portal and all that may go on here over the next couple of weeks. Let's talk some LSU with our guy Glenn West. He's a senior writer at Go 24-7. He's with us every Tuesday on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Glenn, how are you? Hey, Hunt. Doing well. How about yourself? Doing quite well. Uh, let's talk some football first. Um, your impressions overall from the spring game back on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, no surprise there. I think kind of coming in, you were hoping the first team offense would kind of uh, be the, the group that shined through, considering all the returners up front and certainly uh, with the, the skills position players they have coming back. And uh, three for three on touchdowns with Nussmeyer throwing a couple of them and uh, Caleb Jackson obviously running for that 32 yarder thought the, the first team offense just was real crisp, moved really well. Um, the, 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 you know, the other side of things, it was, you know, the little bit of coverage bust for the secondary, which, you know, I, you know just listening to Brian Kelly afterwards, it sounds like that was to be expected. They were very, uh, as Brian Kelly put it, vanilla with their coverages. And, you know, they were, they, they, they left some of these guys um, out on islands on some of these plays that, that Kyron Lacey broke free and, uh, Xavier Thomas just looked like a coverage bust on that touchdown, but uh, so it's clearly a lot of work to do uh, on defense, especially in the secondary. Uh, you know, on the interior D line, that's going to be where they, they they put their focus. But uh, in terms of just individual performances, I thought freshman Gabe Relaford looked really strong. Uh, obviously, a second year uh, corner or second year safety, uh, Kylan Jackson had some really nice plays in there as well. Um, so, you know, there, there's some, some young guys that I think are going to try to push for some more opportunities come fall. And I think that's what you were kind of hoping for is maybe some of those second and third teamers to really, uh, you know, show that they can, they can be, uh, you know, helpful in games. And uh, that, that certainly, I think, looked, looked to be the case on, on Saturday. Is it realistic for Gabe Relaford to, to play a, a reasonable role on next year's defense? Uh, we'll see. I, I do think that Savion, Paris Shan, Deshaun Womack, Braden Swinson, those kind of four guys right there, I think will demand a ton of your, uh, you know, target, uh, snap counts uh, on, on the edge rushers positions next year. I think Ralford can certainly push for some, you know, rotation reps. I mean, we got to see him against some first team guys. That was something that, uh, you know, Kelly said after the, the, the game was that now they got to get him up to speed on Will Campbell and Emory Jones and see how he holds up there. 
Um, so that's two all American tackles. And if he's able to, to make a push on those guys, then, then, then maybe you consider, you know, obviously putting him in there for, for those games in the fall. But, um, right now I would still say probably that those, those first four that I named are, are kind of your clear rotation there on both sides of the, the line of scrimmage. You mentioned Caleb Jackson, uh, in your, in your first, uh, answer there. What do you uh, make of his spring as a whole? Um, good. Uh, I, I think that they've, you know, they've, they've, the big thing with him is just kind of developing those exterior parts of his game uh, outside of the run. I mean, I think we all know what he can be as a runner, um, but but the blocking, the how he can develop as a pass catcher out of the backfield is going to be really important too. Uh, I think he's got a lot of potential in that area in particular. Uh, but this is a team that has a lot of faith and a lot of built up trust in Josh Williams. So. Um, not saying that Caleb's going to be, you know, not on the field at all. I, I do think that he's going to have a pretty significant role with this group. Uh, but there's there's still some more development that needs to be done there. And you know, I think if he kind of you know, develops the way that they hope to this off season, he I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we're having this conversation a year from now, and he's kind of coming back as your leading rusher uh, on next year's team. So there, there's a lot of potential. Obviously, a lot of big home run threats there with him, and, and in the run game in particular. So. I'm excited to see what he looks like in the fall. We know they're going to add some defensive tackles here in the near future, but what did you make of the guys that were out there on Saturday? Uh, a lot of rotation, a lot of uh, just kind of seeing what works well next to Jacoby and Guillory. We saw Jalen Lee out there with them. We saw, uh, I believe we saw a little bit of Sean Washington out there with them as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, very much a work in progress. I mean, they, they, they had some nice runs right up the middle on those guys. Uh, didn't get a whole ton of push up front uh, against the first team offensive line, and that's to be expected. I mean, this offensive line is supposed to be one of the best in the country, and uh, they ha- they kind of had their way, you know, just in terms of protecting us and also uh, opening up some running lanes. So, um, you know, a lot of work to do there. Um, you're gonna, I-, I would imagine, they probably add two uh, more defensive tackles here out of the portal. They've already got uh, the Wisconsin transfer Geo Piaz on board, so. You find another couple here in the in the transfer portal and uh, kind of just see what sticks next to Jacoby and Guillory come fall. Is it what's your confidence level in Garrett Nussmeyer uh, as they go out on the field against USC? I mean, I I opened my talk on Monday just suggesting that I think LSU's got one of the best quarterbacks in the Southeastern Conference. I can't name them all as we sit here today in April, but I just feel really good about where LSU is. Yeah, I mean, he's been in the system now for three years. I think he understands what it takes to have success with this team, uh, with him under center. And I, I think this offseason has been a lot of him trying to, uh, you know, get connected with those guys. And so I, I, I do expect Nuss to be very good next year. I'm not saying he's going to win the Heisman or be what Jaden Daniels was this last year, because I don't think anybody in the country can be what Jaden Daniels was this last year. Um, Nussmeyer comes in here with, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of confidence in his own game. And certainly you saw it there. I think probably the biggest thing with me that I've seen him grow um, is his off platform throwing. Uh, he's, he's been really, really solid when he's kind of on the move on those rollouts, on those play action passes. Uh, and making good decisions uh, down the field and uh, really waiting for things to kind of open up for him. I mean, I think he's done a really nice job of extending plays as well, and he's somebody that I absolutely could see having a monster, monster year next year for LSU, and they're going to need him too. Chatting with Glenn West, senior writer over at Go 247. He's with us every single Tuesday. Uh, Let's flip to the other side of things. Uh, That's baseball, obviously. Um, Not great in Knoxville offensively for the boys, and they get swept once again. Um, are they at rock bottom? Uh, they're about as you know close to rock bottom as you can get. I mean, I, 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 you're getting to the point now where there is no return for this team, and you, you just kind of look at it and you, you ask yourself, okay, what's the most, uh, what's the best way that they can finish the season? What's the best way they can get the most out of this team? I think, I think you got to start leaning into these young guys. They've already kind of started that process with Ashton Larson getting a lot more reps here this past weekend. Uh, you saw those two pitchers, Cam Johnson and Aiden Moffitt. Those are two young guys uh, that, that sort of looked the part um, in, in their limited roles this this past weekend. Um, so I, I I would expect there to be some kind of transition here with those young players getting more and more opportunities as the season goes along. Because I mean, I, just looking at the numbers here, you've got to go probably probably eleven and four, twelve and three the rest of the way just to give yourself a chance. 
and to get into that tournament conversation. And right now, I mean, if the season ended, they wouldn't even be in the SEC tournament. Uh, and they're one of the bottom two teams right now in the conference. And I think, you know, if you had told us that before the season, I think everybody probably would have laughed in your face. But uh, just the reality of where this team is right now, they're just not very high on confidence. And they've got to they got to just try to find something that works. And I think they're still in that process of trying to figure that out. I was very clear in my open today that I am purely speculating with literally zero inside information. It was pure speculation based on a little piece of an answer of Jay Johnson's question last night where he's talking about if, if everybody approached things the way that Ashton Larson does, maybe some guys would perform a little bit better. And I just like, really? That's not something I would have heard him say yeah. last year. You're a lot closer than I am covering these guys day to day. Do you sense that there may be some team chemistry issues, some confidence issues, some culture issues at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I think certainly the confidence uh, issues are, are well at play here. And look, I mean, if you listen to what Jay Johnson's been telling us the last couple of weeks about this team, it, a lot of it sounds like it's, you know, these players have to answer the competitive part of it for themselves. I mean, I can't I remember how many times he said that, how much they, you know, he's come in after a loss or after a difficult loss and um, t- told us, you know, look, these players, they they want to win. They want to you know they want to do right by LSU, but the, the they have to get their own minds right first. And it sounds like that has been a real struggle for a lot of these guys. And um, you know if you're if you're not right in the head, I don't, it's really hard to be right physically and on the field and executing when when you know you've got you know a lot of these these problems that just keep recurring. And you know I I just I think that this is a team right now that's really going through it. Um, you know, I would expect there to be some major changes personnel-wise after the season, um, the way that this has gone. Uh, and you know, I, I, I just, I think you've just got to try to keep riding the ship here and hope that something kind of turns. But I honestly don't know what that could be at this point. There were some guys that I was not surprised to see not used in Knoxville, and you saw Cam Johnson and Aiden Moffitt kind of take those innings, but. I don't know that I thought Thatcher Hurd was on that list, and he did not pitch over the weekend. Yeah. What do you think his role is at this point? Yeah, I think he's, I mean, it's it, it, it's a tough one because, you know, the week before it was Gavin Guidry didn't pitch, and then Guidry comes in after a week off and, you know, gives up a three-run homer there that really kind of puts that Sunday game out of reach. I think they, I think what Jay's just trying to do here is give some other guys opportunities, maybe send a little bit of a hidden message to some of these guys that have been struggling like hey you gotta you gotta figure some stuff out go back to the, the gridiron and work and 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 you know we'll, we'll try you again here soon i would imagine that your purchase uh, pitches sometime this week um you know i i, I kind of get the feeling that it was maybe one of those deals where jay says hey you know, we're going to kind of take the weekend off with you just try to watch some innings see maybe what's going on uh, on the field and uh just just try to get yourself back to kind of some kind of form that you were in towards the end of last year. And uh, it's been a struggle for Thatcher. I know that, you know, they've, they've been trying him out a lot and, and working through some things with him. But, uh, yeah, just, just haven't seen the results on a lot of these guys. And it's not just the Thatcher Hurd thing. It's, it's a lot of these guys have just not been able to, to answer the bell, uh, especially out of the bullpen for LSU this year, which has been a bit surprising to me. For sure. I think there's a chance Thatcher starts tonight on a limited pitch count to have him ready, but we'll see uh, when they play UNO this evening out at the box. I guess we'll hit the third sport here while we are uh, while we got you. Um, Tyrell Ward and Jalen Reed both make the announcement they're going to come back to Matt McMahon's program. You start to look at the roster. Um, it's not done yet. They've got to find somebody to, to play the five, but how do you feel about where they stand right now? Yeah, I think, look, coming in, you, you wanted to see some retention with this group, you know, getting some of these younger guys, these younger pieces, these year two, year three guys back into the program. Uh, and Tyrell Ward and Jalen Reed were at the top of the list there for me. And you know, to get those two guys back, they've had a lot of playing experience now under the belt. I think they understand what it takes to have success in the conference. And hopefully you see that development this off season with them and they're ready to come back and be real pillars for this team. But uh, I, I, I love a lot of these additions. Jordan Sears, the point guard, they got out of UT Martin, guy who averaged 21 and a half points a game, four and a half assists, shoots 40 percent from three. Uh, somebody I think is really going to be able to help you uh, from a point guard position and initiate some offense. Uh, Cam Carter is a really long, lengthy wing who can help you uh, in the scoring department as well. Uh, they just added Victorious Miller, the freshman, uh, to kind of give them a nice little trio there with uh, Curtis Givens and uh, Robert Miller as well. So. 
Uh, you look at this roster, and there's a lot of really interesting, unique pieces here in terms of length and size, uh, but you're absolutely right. The next step here has got to be to get a, a, a rim-protecting five that can grab some rebounds. We'll see if they can do it. Glenn, we appreciate some time, man. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Hunt. Glenn West, senior writer at Go 24-7, looking for your team coverage, looking for your recruiting coverage, all three sports right there that we just hit on. Glenn's got you covered over there at Go 24-7. We'll take a timeout. Come back. i got to see how my guy Jordan's feeling. Big one for the Pels tonight. That's next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Audio, video, security solutions, A-V-S-S-L-A.com is the website. If you're watching the Pels tonight, don't have great sound or a great television set up, well, that's that's on you. The folks at Audio Video Security Solutions can make your home a phenomenal home viewing system. You can put the surround sound in, can mount the television, can wire the whole thing for sound. I've done it at my house, and they can do it for you. You've got a great outdoor area that you like to play some music at, whether it's by the pool or out by where you do some cooking. They can handle that as well. And as I always tell you, security systems such an important feature for everyone's home. They can handle that as well. Mitchell Fisher and his crew, fantastic local team, does great work. And when I give you this phone number, it's not a recorded line getting Mitchell Fisher's cell phone number. He's the owner of the company. It's 225-439-7920. 225-439-7920. Tell them the Hunt Palmer Show sent you over there. It's the folks at Audio Video Security Solutions. Check them out online at avssla.com. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. sunrise to sunset (laughs) playtime to bedtime our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs even in the case of an after hours emergency the light in your life shines brighter with mr electric hey it's matt moscona for years you've heard me tell you about insurance network of louisiana helping you find better coverage for less money but it's not just for your home and auto they also offer commercial property so retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana the local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to 
up on Wednesday's OTB. Did the Pelicans make or break the season? Plus, we'll recap day one of the transfer portal. Any big news for the Tigers? And a brand new hour of flustering off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Plucker's Wing Bar. Blender should be an awesome place to be tonight. In my opinion, Alec Box Stadium is always an awesome place to be. But if you're not going to be in either one of those places, how about Plucker's? You can watch the Pels and the Lakers. You can watch LSU and UNO get some delicious chicken wings, awesome cold beer. And you can play some sports trivia with us tonight at 8.30. Be winding down the Pelicans game at that point. LSU will be in the later innings. We always have a good time on Tuesday. So come on out and see us at Pluckers tonight. Two locations, Nicholson just south of Camus, Blue Bonnet in front of the Mall, Louisiana. Pluckers, always an awesome place to uh, to get some food and watch a game. Speaking of a game, Pels tonight in the play-in against the Lakers. Jordan, how we do it. I'm I'm doing bad. He's I'm down doing, bad. I'm doing I'm doing real bad. Real bad? Real bad. You gotta win one game. That's the problem. It, you gotta win one game, but you gotta play LeBron James. That's like the problem. See, see, look, this the thing is, Hunt. I'm a LeBron <laughs> guy. You know, I, 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 I'm the two thousands baby. So LeBron is all I've seen my whole life. So I didn't see LeBron perform in the greatest moments. That if you lose this game, the whole world is going to skin you alive. So. The fact that I didn't see him perform on that stage, do you think that he's going to, that the play-in is, is, is going to be too big for him? Like how we just seen how the no, Pelicans look? No, I don't think it's going to be too big for the Pels either. They're at home, which could be a bad thing. That's the bad thing. We're at home. If we was on a roll, I'll be like, I feel great, huh? I, I might do a dance. What went wrong in the se- regular season finale that the Pels need to do better tonight? Well, what went right? That's the real question. Well, what, what went very right? Little. I, I don't really know much that went right that game. What went wrong was uh, everything. Um, the rotations was bad. Um, well, the biggest problem that I got was that the Lakers came out at the game aggressive. They came out and punched y'all in the mouth. And you know what we did? Just like, oh, okay, all right, you can have my lunch money, LeBron. It's okay. Like, we don't want no problems with you. And that's just not going to cut it, man. You can't come out there at home for 50 games on the line. Don't forget to add that. 50 games is on the line. Yeah. It was not just, oh, the play-in. Six seed, seven seed. No, 50 games, the second time in franchise history, was on the line. And y'all got punched in the mouth and left the gym. That's the problem. It seems like Willie Green has, has changed the way he's done his rotations the last few weeks. Specifically, Jonas Valanciunas starting the game and then taking him out for basically the rest of the game. Yeah, he, he played, never comes yeah. back in. He played six minutes in the Lakers game. I, I don't really understand the logic behind it. I, I, I don't know if anyone's asked him yet why he's done that, but – Larry Nance was getting punked by Anthony Davis the whole game. Anthony Davis has got a few inches on him, and he's just he's just a better player. Somebody not, just needs to like knee Anthony Davis see, or like I know. flick him, and, and he'll be and, out for and a month. Jonas, if you just Jonas, is that. A, Jonas is a dude. He's big and strong, and he's going to be able to stand up to AD. And, and if you can at least do something to like knock him off, and and, and, and I'm not saying he's. Uh, very good defensively, but at least he can stay in front of Anthony Davis. He's got a few inches on him, so I just didn't understand why we didn't see more of him. Where's your Where's your confidence level, Jordan? <laughs> One to ten. Ten being no chance that the Pels uh, lose. Zero being no chance that they win. Uh, I'm gonna go confidence level. LeBron, we're at home. Damn. I'm gonna go six and a half. That's not that bad. That's not that because it's not that bad because. I didn't watch this too many times. We're not a bad team. Yeah. It's just the Lakers, they always they always punk us. LeBron. Is there a piece of you that wants to lose this game so you don't have to play the Nuggets? No, that's 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 I bleep. Agree. That's I, bleep. I, I because agree. the reason why you don't want to lose this game, the two opponents right after that. Yeah. Either you play the Kings who you're five and oh. I don't think it's in NBA history you can beat a team six times in, in a calendar year. Like I don't know how that's possible. So you either got them or you got Steph Curry and the Warriors, who you just went to their house. And beat them, so you don't think that's on their mind. So it's a, it's like one of the worst, worst situations possible, possible. 
I just got a feeling LeBron woke up this morning and all he can think about is holding Zion, holding Zion to about 13 points. Oh, I, I know he... That's that's what's on his that. mind tonight. He loves that. Because you if you peep, LeBron took the, the challenge to guard Zion. Yeah. He took that at 39 years old. That's like if he's on that type of time, it's it's gonna be a. I don't want to. Yeah. The Pelicans need they need Zion to to play like like a grown man and not play like he's twenty two years old, however old is, because he lets his emotions get the best of him, and they did in that Lakers game. And I also think Brandon Ingram was his first game back, so he he little struggled, I think, a little bit to get back into the team. So hopefully they can get back to the way they were playing earlier in the season, but it, it's. It's a tall task to, to be sure. We're gonna get uh, Sharif's thoughts on it after Sports Center. My, you know, one antidote is like, if the Pels can have one of those flamethrower games, like they had in Golden State, where mm-hmm. they're just hitting shots from everywhere. I mean, in the end, you can break down basketball all you want. It's a shot making sport. Like you, you make shots, you miss shots, and that sounds so simple, and it's not really like an expert analysis in any way, but it's true. Like if you if you have a great shooting night and the other team has trouble. Then all of a sudden, the scales tilt in a big, big way. We'll talk a little more Pels in the second hour. We'll also talk some Transfer Portal with J.D. Piquel of On3 Sports. Come back with us after Sports Center. Sharif Ishaq's with us. It's the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Pluckers. best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $11,000 off the new 23 Dodge Charger. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $11,000 off the powerful new Charger. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. 
but it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. I'm Christine Lisi. Sources tell ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, the Bucks, preparing to be without star Giannis Antetokounmpo for the start of their first round playoff series against the Pacers, but hope treatment on his calf strain will allow him to play at some point in the series. Whether or not Giannis plays won't impact the series outcome, believes first take host Stephen A. Smith. With how explosive Indiana is, I think that they're a locomotive that Milwaukee is incapable of neutralizing. So my attitude is, this. I wasn't surprised by this news. I didn't expect him to start. But I'm anticipating he's going to be back. And I still got Indiana winning this series. Blake Griffin, top overall pick in the 2009 NBA draft, announced his retirement from the league. Michigan that got three years probation was fined and hit with recruiting violations for recruiting restrictions, rather, for recruiting violations during the pandemic under former football coach Jim Harbaugh. Rory McIlroy told the Golf Channel he plans to finish his career on the PGA Tour, denied a report he'd been offered $850 million to move to live golf. Baseball Hall of Fame manager Whitey Herzog has died at the age of 92. Feeling great starts with a great shave, and great shaves start with Barbasol Shaving Cream. That's Barbasol Shaving Cream, an American classic for over 100 years. Close Shave America, Close Shave Barbasol. Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary. Now, The Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Live, Live from, from the Mercedes-Benz Mercedes of Baton, Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Hour number two, Tuesday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show presented by Pluckers. Usually on Tuesdays, we have Sharif Ishak at 2.30. Decided to move things up to 2 o'clock today. A lot going on in the Big Easy, so we head to the Jim's Firearms Hotline Right now, and find our guy Sharif Ishak, Pels and Lakers tonight in the blender. What's the uh, what's the energy in the city, Sharif? A little nervous. Good news is I won't be at the game because you know they don't want me there because I'm bad luck. Bad news is they're playing the Lakers once again. Uh, yeah, nervous energy for sure, man. I mean, Hunt. It's you know three games of the four they played this season on national TV and the Lakers have absolutely punched them right in the mouth from the start. And it, they've never recovered in some of those games. They've never recovered in all three losses. They were absolutely bludgeoned in all those three losses. and They had no chance. So they have to find a way, Hunt. They have to find a way to make the right adjustment. They just got to find a way to stop being so hideous at home. Is, is there something that those three punches in the mouth have in common that the Pels need to guard against tonight? Is there something that looks the same when it happens? Yeah, it, it's very simple here. They are much more physical with the Pelicans. They are just beating them up. They're beating them up bad. And the pick and roll with, with LeBron and Anthony Davis is just something they have not been able to slow down, stop anything. You know, forget the word stop. They haven't even been able to slow it down. Those are the two keys. If they're physical with the, uh, with the Lakers tonight, they're going to have a good chance to win the game. Being physical with Anthony Davis is a good thing. And to me, I think Willie Green needs to stick with Jonas Valanciunas. Like, he, he played him for a few minutes and they didn't put him back into the fourth quarter. Like, you have to stick with Jonas on JV because I think – on uh, AD because I think JV is so physical and physical with him that might give him a better chance. I know he's not going to be able to stop all the lobs, but at least when they set up in the half-court offense that JV can at least do something and be a little more physical with him. But – Look, it's LeBron and AD. They're going to get theirs, but you have to find a way to get yours as well. And, look, I don't know what it is about playing at home and on the road. They just stink at home. I mean, it's plain and simple. They finished 21-19 and at home, 
and they're the best record on the road in the NBA 28-14. I don't know why. It's just a crazy thing. It must be a mind thing. But they've been awful at home. Look, I, I know that Saints fans uh, don't love – Matt Ryan, who was the face of the Falcons forever, and, and Roddy White, who was there for a long time. Joe Montana tormented the Saints for a long time as well. But is is Anthony Davis the most disliked athlete in New Orleans history? Oh, boy, that is a tough one. That is a tough one. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know if he is the most disliked. I mean, some people might say Chris Paul. I don't know if I agree with the Chris Paul one because he was awesome here. He played. He never really complained. While you say that, yeah, Anthony Davis going to be probably up there and oof, I don't know man I mean just trying to think through some of the Saints ones like people who have left the team and turned their backs on the team and gone play with the Falcons I mean people still love Bobby Abair Morton Anderson yeah. uh, I mean I mean, people don't like Derek Carr I mean, but he plays for the Saints <laughs> that, 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 that's a you knew that was coming so, <laughs> I really did that's why it caught me off guard um, but yeah you know it's tough. It's tough. I mean, Anthony Davis is up there, but, you know, I think he's mostly disliked because he's so good and he yeah. wanted his way out of here instead of sticking with the team. Yeah, and the, that's all, folks, shirt and the whole deal. Um, it, it, yeah, it just wasn't a very pleasant uh, breakup there. Um, so, I mean, how big is tonight for Zion Williamson? Yeah, you know, the other night was not pretty. Uh, he, I mean, look, <laughs> To give him, to give him the Willie Green line, give him credit. Give you give LeBron credit. I mean, he absolutely did everything to Zion. Um, they they had AD and LeBron just covering him left and right. They were like giving him the right side of the lane, but Zion just kept going left. They were giving him the right, and he was just going left. They knew they knew the game plan, and they were physical with him. I, I thought it was a clean game. I mean, people are going to complain about the Lakers like never like committing any fouls. I thought the Pelicans didn't do anything to earn any foul calls early in, in that game. So that game plan was, was perfect. It was perfect. I mean, they, they, they double teamed them, and, and I, I, I don't know why would they go away from it. They're probably going to do it again tonight. So what is realistic to expect of Brandon Ingram now that he's been back for five minutes? Um, he is, uh, the 23 minutes will probably be up to 35, 40 minutes. He, he has to shoot the lights out. He showed some glimpses in that game. He took nine shots. He's six of nine in that game. I think he's, you know, he's he's got to be the shot creator and the playmaker that, you know, that they had whenever they were successful in the stretches with it was he and Zion and, and everybody else on the court. Um, <laughs> D.I.'s just got to be the one who hits the threes, too. I mean, if they're going to go as shoot as poorly as they did the other night tonight, it's, it's going to be a, a recipe for disaster. I mean, they have to get off to a good start. It has to be led by whether it's Brandon or Zion. One of those two guys have to get them off to a good start because if they get behind like they did the other night, it's lights out. No, we'll see you Friday night for the winner take all game. Yeah. I mean, it's uh and it's an interesting spot because I've heard a lot of people talk about it uh, different ways, but you, you speak to me, if you win, you got to deal with you know Denver. And then if you, you lose, maybe you get a matchup that's a little more favorable. It's not LA and then potentially OKC. Like, well, how do you parcel out that entire piece of it? Don't look at it that way because you are really like playing with fire by doing that because you you can say, well, you know what? Hey, we lost. You know what? At least we don't have to face the Nuggets. But you know what you have to do? You have to beat the Kings for a sixth time, which is that's amazing to believe it. Someone beat them five times in a season or beat the Warriors who have that veteran leadership and has been there, done that in this situation. And then you have to play the Thunder. I mean, you really have no easy way out here. To me, I'd much rather win tonight get into the playoffs and don't take my chances because you never know what can happen Friday. If you're playing that game and you lose both and you lose Friday and you win 49 games and you don't make it to the playoffs, what a fail. It's an absolute fail. So next, okay, so exactly. So that's my next question. So if next time we talk, like we'll kind of know how things have played out. Um, but right now where we don't have that emotion of it and all we know is that they finished the season as the seven seed, um, what, does that regular season mean to you? 49 wins. You know, I think it ties for the second most in franchise history with the 08 09 team, which, believe it or not, if they win tonight, they'll be playing that same team, the Denver Nuggets. It's tough, man. Last year, if, last year the 49 win team would have had you with a three seed in the Western Conference. This year, you're, you're the seven seed. It's just crazy how competitive the Western Conference has been. But yeah, to me, I think it'd be a failure. I mean, look. They under they they under exceeded. I mean, it'd be an absolute 
fall flat on your face moment if you win 49, just winning 49 games and being the seventh seed. And then I told you weeks ago, Hunt, months ago, we're going to look back at some of those games that they should have never lost at home. And, and here we are. The Memphis game, Rockets game, the Spurs game. There's about eight or nine games. Had they won three or four, it'd be a different story. They might be talking about the five seed right now. So, yeah, it'd be a little disappointing for sure. How do you think it goes tonight? Oh, man. I'm not there. I'm the bad luck. People are superstitious, so I guess they're going to win tonight. I That'd think they'll, they'll win. It will not be easy I, it, because I keep looking at it. I'm like, what are they going to do differently? They don't have different players, and they still have LeBron and AD. I, I, they're going to have to sink their shots like they did on New Year's Eve. They're just going to have to knock those shots in. They just can't go cold, and it has to be a fast start. I think close game. I just I think we know that's one of the bugaboos for this team this year has not been able to like being able to win those close games. I think if they win it tonight, it's going to be in the close game situation scenario for them. I saw Scott Kushner tweet earlier today that it kind of had a, a secondary market ticket situation. It looked like there were quite a few tickets still available. Do you expect a good environment tonight? I do. I really do expect a good environment, but I, I think there's going to be way more Lakers fans than Sunday. Sunday was the perfect, you know, atmosphere. Not many Laker fans. They had some, but it's not as many as like you saw in some of the previous games when they were playing here. But I think people are just fatigued from the play-in. They're fatigued from seeing, you know, the, the same two teams playing, you know, 48 hours apart. Pell fans are just, they want playoffs. They don't want play-in. I think they're just tired of the play-in scenario for the third straight season. And, you know, this season was supposed to be it. And, yeah, they, they exceed, they you know, won seven more games than a year ago and just think they're tired of the play-in, plain and simple. I do think the atmosphere would be good. And I now want to see if they're going to be more Laker fans. In my opinion, I think there will be compared to Sunday's game. We'll talk next week. We'll have uh, some finality to the Pels' regular season situation and certainly talk NFL draft next week as well. Thanks, Sharif. Can't wait. <laughs> Sharif Ishak, WDSU down in New Orleans, all things Saints and Pels. Looking for a place to watch the Pels tonight. Pluckers should be your spot. They bring you our Tuesday shows each and every week. Transfer portal is open in college football. J.D. Piquel has been all over it for On 3 Sports. He's with us during football season, but we thought we'd bring him on back for a segment today, so we'll do that coming up next. You are now listening to The Hunt Palmer Show. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by Sunshine at sunequip.com. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas 
for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Charles Hanniger, join us for the Wednesday edition of Live at Lunch from Snow Seafood and Steak on Airline Highway in Gonzales. Rabelais back from the Masters, and Wes Reynolds joins us from Beeson. Live at Lunch, 11 a.m. Wednesday on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Mark your calendar and invite your friends as we celebrate the NFL draft in style with the Boudreaux Electric ESPN Baton Rouge Draft Party live from Don Juan Cigar Bar and exclusively on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. Join us Thursday, April 25th at 7 p.m. and hang with the ESPN Baton Rouge Dream Team while indulging in the finest cigars paired with signature cocktails. It's the Boudreaux Electric ESPN Baton Rouge Draft Party at Don Juan Cigar Bar and live on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Plucker's Wing Bar. College football's transfer portal is open for business, and I personally don't know that I know exactly what to expect out of the spring portal cycle. I think a lot of us have a pretty good handle on what goes on in December and January. Um, the spring, I'm still trying to get a hold of. If you're looking for a hold of it, you can check out folks over at On3 Sports. J.D. Bacall with us all football season long. and Jumps aboard a little Tuesday segment here. J.D., how are you? Man, I'm doing awesome. I'm doing awesome. It's a pleasure to be on with you during this part of the year, man. I'm used to us talking and having a big game to discuss on Saturday. and we got big uh, big things shaking in the portal, man, so I'm, I'm excited to talk some ball with you. Roster building is uh, is the term here as opposed to necessarily like recruiting. So as I just said, like I don't know what to expect over the next two weeks. What do you expect? And I think, to put it simply, this part of the year, like this, this portal window is all about impacting November, whereas that first portal window is about impacting August. Like I think a lot of it is building depth and who's your – you know, maybe re repairing the offensive line or defensive line a little bit. But for the most part, like, I don't think you're going to see guys that I would classify as, like, a five percenter. Like, you know, the top end of the roster talent in college football. If they were moving, they already moved during that that winter period. So I think you'll see most of these guys be depth pieces. And, um, it, I mean, it'll have an impact. Don't get it twisted. But it's not going to be the guys that you see flash on opening day, like maybe some move around in that first portal window. Yeah, that was kind of what I said yesterday. Like the Jameer Gibbs, Jamison Williams, Eli Ricks movement towards Alabama, those type of guys, quarterbacks specifically, I think that's a lot of the the December movement, the January movement. Here, I, I, the feeling is that most of these guys are maybe a little unhappy with where they were working in spring in terms of the depth chart and maybe want a, a fresh start. Yeah, I, I think that's 100% the case. Uh, I think it really is like, 
if you were a big name and you were going to make a move, if you were a Cam Ward, you were moving to get spring practice. Like, if you're moving at this point in the year, I think the question of, okay, well, why couldn't you cut it at your other places is a fair question to ask. And uh, for some of these guys, it might be like, hey, that running back room was stacked. I, I didn't see myself getting into the two-man rotation. If I'm an Andrew Paul, like a good player, really highly tied and recruit, but like, God bless him, he's got Trevor Etienne and Roger Robinson in front of him. So he's going to go help somebody else out, probably get some more carries. And uh, just kind of the, the way the whole thing is uh, is rolling. So yeah, I think we're, we're in lockstep here. Will it be impactful? Sure, but it's not going to be, wow, they went from being a bull team to being a college football playoff contender. Don't think that's really what we're seeing here. Now that we've had a few years of this transfer portal under our belt, there's kind of a, a good handle on how people want to use it. Lane Kiffin has pushed all of his Ole Miss and IL chips in on grabbing transfer, 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 transfer. Brian Kelly has said publicly in press conferences, like, I don't want, I want to start with high school guys and we'll supplement as we need. Like this year, they've got to find a defensive tackle or two. We want to do that. Dabo Sweeney's trying to avoid the entire thing uh, in, 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 over at Clemson. So what, what's your feeling on the best way to go about assembling a roster in the power five at this point? Yeah, that's a, that's a tremendous question that I'm, I'm hoping we'll get some more clarity on here over the course of the next couple of years. Like the best call for me, Hunt, my, my mind in a lot of times will go to like the way that meals are prepared and the way that you cook things. And so when it comes to putting, you know, a college football roster together. And so my comp here is like the transfer portal is going out to eat and recruiting at the high school level is just getting good groceries. Um, Lane Kiven has made it pretty clear. Like he doesn't have a whole lot of interest in going to the grocery store and putting a meal together and, and going through all that. And I mean, like more power to him. He's going to the same grocery store as Alabama, Georgia, LSU. And so, you know, how many battles are you going to win against those kind of teams? probably not as many as you need to 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 be a team that's going to win the SEC. So he's saying, okay, I'll go out to eat. I'll go get my filet mignon another way and you know, have to probably pay a higher price point, but it is what it is. So I think it really is about how effective can you be in the portal? You know, how, how much of a science do you have it down to? And also, like, let's, let's be real here, uh, how deep are your pockets to, you know, supplement that, that habit and supplement your uh, desire to go eat out every single night. So I think the teams that are able to high, recruit the high school level more consistently and have a talent pool on their roster that has like a strong base is probably going to have more longevity to it. Um, but overall, like if, if Ole Miss ends up winning a national title here in the next couple of seasons with a portal in roster, I think we're all going to kind of reevaluate how, uh, how we viewed this thing over the course of the last couple of years. I'm going to reevaluate, reevaluate a lot of things if uh, Ole Miss wins the national title. Let's just go ahead and put that out on the table. Uh, let's talk some spring football, uh, spring games, a lot of them in the rearview mirror, a couple more to come uh, in the next couple of weeks. But uh, LSU wrapped up on Saturday. What's the, the scuttlebutt on the Tigers? Man, I was encouraged to see Garrett Nussmeyer just make good decisions because I, I, I'm sure you probably attested this. Huh? Like, I don't think anybody's questioning if that dude can throw it deep. Nobody's questioning if he's uh, – wants to stretch the field a little bit, like we were talking about this time last year with Jaden Daniels, if he you know, can, can be more explosive in the past game. Uh, Garrett Nussmeyer is more than happy to do that. So seeing him make good decisions, and I don't think he threw an incompletion, if, if I remember correctly. I think it was 7-7. Seven seven. Yep. So, you know, it's a spring game. Uh, you know, Take as much from it as, as you would like to, but the good decisions is obviously encouraging. And then if you're an LSU fan, there's probably a little bit of a – you know, a give and take there with, hey, the offense had a great day, but if one side of the football had a great day, that means the other side probably had a lackluster day. And I know the, the folks in Baton Rouge are holding their breath a little bit on what that defensive side of the ball is going to look like. I would say it's fair to be frustrated with the showing in the spring game to a degree, but also to use that context of, hey, this is a new defense. It's a new staff. It still has to gel a little bit. You know, those were guys that, that had, you know, busts in, in coverage. It wasn't just like they were getting – manhandled in the back end it's a physical issue like you know we're going to get more data on that here in fall camp so overall you know just testing for symptoms if you're watching the spring games a lot a lot of good symptoms a lot of good things to pull from that uh that spring game specifically garrett nussmeyer what's the vibe like in tuscaloosa these days it was kind of jarring to sit back from afar and see that many players into the transfer portal you bring in a new head coach i mean have they have they settled things over there it was jarring for me to see Molly McGrath talking to Nick Saban on the sideline and have him be there as a spectator. Like that was <laughs> that was a whole new experience. I'm like, what is going on? Why is 
why is he not yelling at somebody right now about hustling on and off the field? Um, I was I was impressed by the running back room there. Like I think they're legitimately three deep. I think they can still be physical bully Alabama if they want to on offense. The big wait and see for me for them is what are they going to be defensively? Like they got some pieces on that defense. They're really young in the back end. I think they're going to be in attack mode when it comes to this transfer portal cycle. Like I think they are going to be one of those teams that you see kind of swinging a a big stick, if you will, because the tide went out when Nick Saban retired, and now there's a little bit more volume to draw from. So I expect them to be buyers, expect them to be aggressive, like I mentioned. So we'll see what happens there. But overall, I really think that offense is going to be potent. I think the way they're going to spread teams out and still utilize Jalen Milrow's legs and give him a lot of uh, what I would call easy access throws. They're not going to ask him to be an NFL quarterback and layering the ball over the field. Like I think they're really going to play to his strengths, and I think he's going to have a really big jump from this past season to this upcoming year. What's the temperature in Gainesville, Florida these days? <laughs> if I had to guess, pretty humid. I, I, I've never lived in Gainesville. <laughs> I'm sure things are just swimming down the sidewalk. Man, Trey Wilson's a stud, isn't he? I mean, I knew, I knew we all got to see him last year, and he's like Coke and Mentos when he gets the ball in space, just so explosive. But I'm really... I'm 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 probably one of the last people on this branch here, Hunt, but like I don't think Florida is nearly as left for dead as maybe the public would like us to believe. Graham Mertz in the second year in the system, totally revamped defense, a little more oversight for Austin Armstrong now with Ron Roberts coming over from Auburn. Like I think the input there is a lot better than it was last year in regards to that five and seven season. Um I'm excited to see what they do. Again, I think Trey Wilson's a big-time playmaker. If they can have somebody to compliment him in the past game, it could be that transfer from Wisconsin, Shamir DK, who played with Graham Mertz uh, a lot during their time together, had a lot of chemistry there. Um, if they can have a couple of answers offensively, they, I don't think they're going to win the SEC or anything crazy like that, but I, I would imagine they're going to wreak some havoc along the way with that last month of their schedule just being absolutely hunger games. That 2023 signing class in College Station is all but gone, uh, but Mike Elko has done a pretty good job in the transfer portal of, of attracting some names. Um, where is Texas A&M's football program right now? I think the roster is, is still, like you said, they don't really have quite the same uh, roster that they had when that 23 class signed, but I think the talent level is still in a good enough spot to where I could definitely see them making some noise and being a, a, a nine-win football team if they get that structure right. Like, my problem with A&M is they've had the talent over the course of the last couple of years and based on the results, haven't had the structure to maximize that talent. Um, with Connor Wegman, assuming he's healthy and, and assuming that the Mike Elko way of doing things is able to get a little bit more out of that talent they have in, in College Station, um, I kind of feel similar to them as I feel about Florida, but maybe a little bit of a higher floor with them. I think they're not going to win the SEC, but they're just going to be such a tough out week in and week out, especially playing in College Station. So. Uh, I'm excited to watch them. I really think Connor Wegman's got a lot under the hood that we haven't seen yet, and so if he can stay healthy, that could be the difference maker for them. J.D., we'll catch up with you down the road. Really appreciate some time today. Appreciate you. Have a great one, man. He's J.D. Piquel, host of The Hard Count on On3. Check him out on YouTube. Subscribe up to the channel. If you're a college football junkie and want it all year long, J.D. has got you covered with it over on YouTube, host of The Hard Count. All right, when we come back, Um, There's a list of the top 100 players coming back in college football that I saw online today. And LSU's got a few, um, but one I want to talk about specifically because I disagree with the blurb that was posted about him. We'll do that coming up next. You are now listening to The Hunt Palmer Show. Visit us at LaBear's Baton Rouge Casino this spring for all the hoops and hockey playoff action. We've got the biggest screens, the best food and drink, plus... Giving away pin cash bonuses and prizes to pin play rewards members. Not a member? Join today by downloading and registering for the pin play app from the App Store. Unlock all the fun, including a chance to win up to $2,000 in pin cash. All this and more. Make LaBear's Baton Rouge Casino your spring sports viewing headquarters. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 522 4700. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge.
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. REC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. REC, your number one park system in the nation. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Adam Moscona inviting you to join us for Tuesday's AFR, powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. LSU baseball back at home against UNO, and we continue our SEC spring recaps looking at Tennessee. Join us, 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. While you're busy with spring cleaning, we'd like to add to the clutter in your bank account to the tune of $2,000. It's the 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge Spring Cha-Ching, powered by Citizens Bank and Trust. Register today at 104.5 ESPN.com. I did not write that promo. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Plucker's Wing Bar. I can use some more clutter in the bank account. Yeah. I'll tell you what does not create clutter in the bank account is moving. No, it does gotta not. Gotta buy this and deal with that and handle this. It's just a constant outflow of cash. So yeah. if they want to give me the two thousand, I'll certainly take it. But I'm guessing once again, I'm I'm ineligible. Um, CBS Sports had a piece up on their college football website by Blake Brockermeyer that ranks the top one hundred college football players entering the twenty twenty four season. And LSU was well represented um, in the list. Will Campbell comes in at number six. Harold Perkins comes in at number 16. Mason Taylor checks in at number 48. And Emory Jones checks in at number 61. And I don't have a significant issue with any of that. I think Will Campbell is one of the 10 best players in college football. I think Harold Perkins is an explosive playmaker on the defensive side of the ball that you can plug him in at 16. Mason Taylor, it surprised me to see him at number 48, but he's got a, a, a signature moment, uh, a, a name that's got a real good pedigree behind it. And he's a third-year player at a high-profile program. And then Emory Jones, I think, we all think is is poised to have an all-league type year. So I, I agree with all of, of those rankings. Where I did have a little bit of an issue is in the blurb about Harold Perkins. And I'll read it to you. This is from Blake Brockermeyer. And then I'll, I'll tell you why I, I disagree a little bit. It says Perkins, it, first of all, it says LSU Edge, Harold Perkins Jr. In the blurb, it says, Perkins is one of the nation's most dynamic players. LSU misused him most of last season, and it cost the defensive staff their jobs. It was a wasted year playing in the box for somebody who should be wrecking havoc on the edge. This is a contract year for somebody who draws Micah Parson comps. Okay, let's unpack that in its entirety. 
Perkins is one of the nation's most dynamic players. Yes, absolutely I agree with that. He was a five-star recruit, maybe the best running back in the state of Texas. Thought of as a defensive player, absolutely dynamic. We saw him announce his presence in the Arkansas game a couple years ago. LSU misused him most of last season. Yes, I think that there's a chance that Harold Perkins was not put in a uh, position to succeed, specifically in the game against Florida State. It cost the defensive staff their jobs. I wouldn't go that far. There were a lot more issues than where Harold Perkins lined up last year as it pertains to LSU's defense. Said it was a wasted year playing in the box for somebody who should be wrecking havoc on the edge. Eh. I'm halfway on that. And then it's a contract year for somebody who draws Micah Parsons comps. Micah Parsons is probably the best defensive player in the NFL today now that Aaron Donald has moved on. And when you start talking about a contract year, you're talking about the NFL. You've now moved away from college football when you speak to a contract year for Micah Parsons. You're saying the NFL is looking at him to throw a lot of money at him. Okay. I understand the Micah Parsons comps, what Micah Parsons does in the NFL on Sundays right now, and what Harold Perkins can do on Saturdays right now. I do not believe in the Micah Parsons comps when we start talking about what Harold Perkins can do in the NFL in 2025. But also they're not... They're not comparable in terms of size either. That's the next note. Oh, sorry. You're good. But it's, I mean, it, that's the point. Harold Perkins is six foot one, 220 pounds. Micah Parsons is 6'3, 245. Harold Perkins can wear out Arkansas's right tackle. We've seen it. I know that. I don't know if he can wear out the Jets' right tackle. I don't know who plays right tackle for the Jets, but he's 6'1", 220. My question is, find me anyone who spends a lot of time on a defensive edge in the NFL that is 6'1", 220 pounds. I'll give him 8 pounds and get him at 6'1", 228. That, to me, doesn't exist. I am happy to say I'm wrong if someone in the Bayou Ford chat or someone who sees this on Twitter, or who sees this on YouTube and wants to comment on the page below, and has a great example of a six foot one, 225 pound edge rusher. If that exists, I will hold my hand, especially an elite one, I'll hold my hand up and go, okay, well, tell me more. But like, Justin Houston is 6'3", 270. Clay Matthews, 6'3", 240. Von Miller, 6'3", 250. Harold Perkins is never going to weigh 250 pounds, I don't think. I just don't think it's realistic to put 30 pounds on him. You're going to lose the dynamic playmaker that he is. And that's why I push back when I hear people say, put him on the edge and leave him there. This has him ranked as the 16th best player in the country at edge. I, I don't know that I agree with that. Do we know that Harold Perkins is awesome at standing up, reading the play, and tackling a, a running back? At playing the read out? Like, I know he's really good on third and eight at rushing the passer. I know he's good if he's got a lead and he can pin his ears back and go. But I, I don't know that he's Micah Parsons. And, like, when you say it was a wasted year last year, I realize you want development from year to year, but he played 14 games as a freshman and 13 as a sophomore. Obviously, you throw in the SEC championship game. He went from 72 tackles to 75. He went from 39 solo tackles to 43. He went from 13 tackles for loss to 13 tackles for loss. He had two more sacks as a freshman than he did as a sophomore, in one more game. Incidentally, I looked this up. Every sack Harold Perkins has ever had, which, quick math, there is 13 sacks at LSU, all in the SEC. Never a non-conference sack. But his stats were basically very comparable. Now, if you want to tell me he should take a bigger jump, like I'm not going to push back on that. He didn't play a lot in some of the games as a freshman. He didn't play really at all against Florida State. So it's not a perfect analogy, and I'm... Putting all the cards on the table there as I break this down. 
But like suggesting that they they took a 15 sack guy and locked him in a closet, I think is disingenuous. And to suggest that he's going to play like Micah Parsons in the NFL, to me, is disingenuous. To me, there's got to be a balance with Harold Perkins at LSU. Yes, if you were up 17 points early in the fourth quarter, put him on the edge and let him run. Yes, if it is third and 11, put him on the edge and make a tackle's life miserable. But he's got to learn to do some other stuff because if he's going to be an impactful NFL player at six foot one, 225 pounds, he needs to learn how to play in the field of play, cover some people, read and react to gaps, tackle running backs. It's he's not just an edge rusher because Pro Bowl tackles are going to swallow him whole if he's doing that the entire game. There will be a time that Harold Perkins can rush the passer in the NFL, but that can't. he can't play like Von Miller. So to leave Harold Perkins on the edge and have him not develop at all as a linebacker in the middle of the field, to me, if I was an NFL scout, I would look at that and go, yeah, that looks really good against Mississippi State, but how does that look against the Seahawks? Well, probably not great if he does that 65 times in a game. You've got to develop him to improve his draft stock so that the next Harold Perkins that comes along that can be the 16th ranked player in college football entering a season by CBS wants to show up and play for you because you prove you can develop guys and get them to the NFL. No, it is not the only thing that you're trying to do when you attract talent. Just move them on to the NFL. NFL, NFL, no. You've got to win games. That's job number one for LSU's football coach. But part of winning games is getting the next Harold Perkins, and if you don't treat this one the way that you need to treat him, you may not get the next one. So I'm thrilled that LSU has four of the top 61 players in the country by CBS, and I'm thrilled that Harold Perkins is on the team. But to call him an edge and say he's got Micah Parsons comps and say he was completely wasted last year, I don't think is telling the whole story. Now, I'm not Blake Brockermeyer and I don't have his job, but I would think it would be difficult to go through every player in college football to come up with a top 100 and know everything about every player. That's a hard thing to do nationally. We boy, we got 85 guys to worry about in football. We got 30 guys to worry about in baseball. We got 12 to worry about in basketball in this market. We can handle that and, and know the story inside and out. Trying to do the entire country is a tough ask. But I, I, I take a little bit of issue with this, and my suggestion to Blake Baker would be keep Harold Perkins in pass rush packages, which they have, but help him learn to be an impact player in the middle of a defense because that's something he's going to need as well. And, oh, yes, he will need to show that he can cover some people too. No, I do not want, like Florida State did last year, him getting schemed out into the field Every single play. That's bad. I will admit that. But you got to do both. And I think that Blake Baker is is poised to do that. And I think Harold Perkins will have a really, really good junior year here at LSU. If you're looking for LSU football content, you can always find it on YouTube. Hunt on LSU is our YouTube channel. Hunt on LSU. Subscribe up to it. Uh, whether it's recruiting news, transfer portal news, lists that have LSU players on them. We'll be talking about it all year long. Hunt on LSU. Subscribe to it so those videos go right to your homepage as you log on to YouTube. We'll take one more time out. Come back and get out of here because my voice has not got a ton left in it. We'll do 15 more minutes coming up next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Boudreaux's Electric. Love telling you about my friends at Boudreaux's Electric. Give yourself the peace of mind of knowing the power is not going to go out. It did last week. And you had that nasty storm that came through. All of a sudden, you can't work from home because you don't have any internet. House gets real hot. Just a bad situation. Not to mention when the hurricane season comes through and you've got to evacuate or ride one out, you either have to sit in a really hot house that has no electricity or you return to one and your entire fridge and freezer is spoiled. The time to think about a generator is not after the event has happened. The time to think about it is now. 
Give my friends at Boudreaux's Electric a call, 985-397-1562. It's 985-397-1562. You get that Generac generator installed. You get that 7 to 10-year warranty, depending on the model of generator that you get. And you've got the peace of mind of knowing that your power is not going to go out at home or at your place of business. It's Boudreaux's Electric. Boudreaux's Electric. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units. Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. It's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. Coming up on Wednesday's OTB, did the Pelicans make or break the season? Plus, we'll recap day one of the transfer portal. Any big news for the Tigers? And a brand new hour of flustering off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. Live After Five is back this spring. Clock out and rock out with us Fridays from April 12th through May 24th in downtown Baton Rouge for the free concert series from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Join us for another season filled with incredible music, delicious food, talented artists, and a lively second-line parade. This Friday, come out to see Kenny Neal for Live After Five. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Plucker's Wing Bar. I, uh, I emceed Live After Five last Friday. Uh, it's always a really, really good time. Um, they've got great music. Uh, the weather is really good this time of year. There's awesome vendors for pizza and crawfish boils and boudin balls all kind of oysters across the street. It's, it's, uh, it's really fun. It's free. So uh, if you're looking for something to do on a, a gorgeous Friday afternoon, head on down to, uh, downtown to Live After Five. Bring your chair and uh, enjoy some, uh, some great weather here in the springtime in South Louisiana. All right, back. Take it or leave it. All righty, first one here. John Sterling is retiring after 36 years calling Yankees games. 
John Sterling home run calls. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. I I'll think take if it. you're probably a Red Sox fan, like you hate him because that's the Yankees, but like I have no dog in the fight in the AL East. It was a lot, but it was unique to him. And so I think that's really cool for those that don't um, remember. He would, it was, it's an A bomb for A Rod. And he would, it would, ju- he had this weird like French one for John Carlos Stanton that was crazy. A uh, hip hip Jorge for Jorge Nasada. Um, El Capitan for Jeter's home runs. Like he just, he had a unique one for everybody that, that went through. And I thought that that was a really cool thing that he did. Um, Sounds like that it's not a significant health issue for Sterling, even though he's retiring right here early in the season, in the middle of the week. Uh, he's just tired. I mean, the guy's in his uh, in his 80s and uh, has done a great job for 36 years calling Yankee games. So, uh, hat tip to John Sterling. Hell of a run. The Texas Rangers are calling up former Vandy ace Jack Leiter today. Leiter is one of the best SEC pitchers you've ever seen. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. I'll um, take it. He was nasty. I mean, now... He was, like, right on the front end of the guys that were all throwing 96, 97. Now that's more common. You see a lot of that. I mean, I can go through a lot of guys in the league uh, today that are throwing 96, 97. But he was right on the front end of that. Um, and the slider was so good, and he commanded. He didn't walk a lot of guys. I think a lot of people would consider Kumar Rocker the ace on that team for that couple-year of run. To me, it was lighter. Um, you know, I don't know that I'm going to quite put him up there with, with Aaron Nola. He's not going to be in Skeen's level for me, but he's right up there in the last – you know, 10 or 12 years with 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 all the good ones uh, he was really really good he had a bumpy start to his professional career in minor league ball but uh, sounds like he straightened it out and he'll get to start uh, with josh smith playing third base today u.s open champion and number five in the world wyndham clark has yeah. announced he and bo hostler are going to be teaming up to play in next week's zurich classic take it or leave it take it that's I'll awesome news uh you've got obviously um Rory McIlroy playing in it once Shane again. Shane Lowry as well, who's got, going yeah. really well this year. He has. Um, and you're obviously talking about Shoffley and Cantlay who are coming back yep. uh, to play in it. So I think the Hoygaard brothers, uh, who uh, yeah. one, one of them, uh, Nikolai, played really well at the Masters. Are uh, any word on is Homa playing? I don't. I haven't heard yet, no. but I mean, him. I know him and Morikawa right. both are Zurich Mor- guys. Morikawa is so. a Zurich guy, so hopefully yeah. uh, we can get some of that. It's like they've got. I think. I think I saw they have. Five of the top ten in yeah. the world at this point. So, Which is really good for that, that tournament. Yeah, that's great. I'm just excited. Wyndham Clark, a defending major champion, uh, is going to be in. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. That's great for your news. I mean, this is a terrible spot on the schedule. So, for the yeah. You just had uh, Bay Hill and the players, and then they had the Texas tournaments, and you have the Masters, and now they're all at a, a um, an elevated event at Harbortown this week, and then you've got immediately the Zurich follows. So it's been a long run for those guys, and a lot of them want to sit out, but um, it's cool that, that some will play. That's great. I think uh, – that I don't know that the Zerk would still be around if they hadn't switched to the team format. I yeah. think that really entices a lot of guys. It's just, it's a really cool cool uh, format to play in. So last, let me, let me go, go one more. Um, just like getting out in front of this, we're we're really early. If and I will say this a couple times next week too. But if you have never been to the Zurich and you care about watching golf at all on TV, it is as good a viewing experience of professional sports as I've had. I mean, I've never sat on the floor of an NBA game or on the right behind home plate. At, at, a, at a major league game. But, like, if you go to the Zurich on what Thursday, Friday, and assuming they make the cut Saturday, Sunday, you will be able to stand 12 yards from Rory McIlroy hitting a golf shot. Like, maybe not the first shot he hits, but, like, at some point, you will be right in front of him hitting a golf shot. And that's just not something with the greatest players in the world that we do a lot. I think a lot of times, you know, you, you buy a ticket at the Smoothie King Center in the Superdome, you might be in the upper deck or back on row 47, and, like, that's great. It's a fun deal. But this is like right up close and personal because if you're watching like the Masters on TV and you got these 30 deep crowds watching Tiger, like that's not the case at the Zurich. You can walk right up to the tee box and stand there and watch him hit shots. It is really cool. So I would highly recommend y'all uh, go out and, and check that out next week and, and buy some tickets. They're very affordable. There's a lot available and it's uh, it's a great uh, experience. So they're not paying me to do that, but I've gone to the Zurich four or five times and I'm just telling you it's a great experience. All right, last one here. Next Friday, Purdue and Northwestern will play game one of their series at Wrigley Field. Take it or leave it? I'll take it. That's that's cool for them. The Cubs will be out of town. Um, I don't know there's going to be any green on the Ivy there, so not necessarily the entire experience uh, for those folks, but very, very cool for college players to be able to play a game at Wrigley Field. Of course, Northwestern just an hour up the road in Evanston and um, you know, West Lafayette not too far away either. So that's a cool thing. Uh, Big Ten baseball, not a big deal. 
Um, a lot of schools don't take it all that seriously. Michigan made, of course, that long run into the uh, the final a few years ago, and Kyle Schwarber had a really good Indiana team. But generally speaking, not a lot of interest in uh, in Big Ten baseball. This is a cool thing for those uh, those players that want to do that. And you know, if they've got a really good player that plays really well and wants to come transfer down to LSU, we'll take that as well. <laughs> but I think that's cool uh, for them to be able to play at, uh, at Wrigley Field in a game that uh, actually counts. So. That's it for Take It or Leave It. Appreciate uh, back you for, for getting those and reading those out on this Tuesday. Our Tuesday show is brought to you by Pluckers. Get on by Pluckers tonight. Um, if you're not going to the blender, not going to the box, both those games will be on at Pluckers. We'll be watching them. We'll be playing sports trivia. You can win gift cards, drink some cold beers, eat some awesome wings. It'll be a great time. Uh, Pluckers on Nicholson is where we have it, 830 for sports trivia. Also, get on by the Blue Bonnet location. They'll have the games on as well. All right, uh, if you missed any of the show today, you can catch it on demand, 1045ESPN.com's On Demand tab, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and of course on YouTube, open with some Jay Johnson sound, talk some transfer portals and defensive tackles LSU may be looking at. Glenn West joined us to talk all three LSU sports. Sharif Ishak on the Pels as they get ready for the play in the night. J.D. Piquel on the transfer portal as well before some LSU football talk. Matt's going to drive you home next on AFR. We're back same time, same place tomorrow. It's on the Palmer Show. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dog.